not, uh, you can use Clearbit, you can use Apollo. We like Zoom Info, we're Zoom Info partners. So, you know, it, it, it's really good for an enterprise tech stack. And, uh, you know, uh, we find that Zoom Info customers are our best customers. So a uh, little bit of a uh, behind the scenes there. But yeah, so I'm gonna talk a lot about Zoom Info, but just remember if you go to another org that uses Clearbit or Apollo or any of these other data aggregators, um, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is strategic and you can use them with any sort of tool that you have. I am recording, so let me go ahead and get started. I feel like we've got enough time for the stragglers to come in. Oh, actually one more thing. Uh, how many are in marketing? Raise your little digital hands. Okay, awesome, awesome. Anybody, oh, everybody, okay. Oh, okay, okay, I'll put the marketing jokes to the side then. Uh, okay, MQLs are a real thing. Okay, uh, and JK, JK. And then what about sales? Anybody from sales? No, maybe, maybe some people forgot. And anybody from ops, rev ops, anything like that, IT. And if you raise your hand for all three, good. You're my favorite type of person. <laughs> and God bless your soul. Okay, so let me go ahead and get into it. Um, Y'all can see my screen. Feel free to, if you have any questions, put it in the comments on the side, I'll get to them. And then uh, these will be recorded and you'll have, uh, you'll get the recording today. Um, and then it'll be a YouTube link so you could uh, save it, share it, post comments about it. Uh, if you have any questions, put it on the side. So my name is Milton. I work for Sales LabX here in, uh, you can't see my shirt, but uh, here in Austin, Texas. We are certified Salesforce specialists. Uh, uh, partners, so we work very closely with them. Um, our kind of core areas of proficiency, you can see me not having my setup here properly. Um, our core area of proficiency is gonna be tech stack or, uh, orchestration. So basically uh, you have you know, outreach, you have sales loft, you have uh, you know Apollo, you have Zoom Info, you have Pardot, you have Salesforce, you have you know Calendly. You have all these different tools and how do all of them talk to each other to get you an actual ROI. And then uh, conversion optimized design. So we have Salesforce and Pardot specific designers and coders for things like landing pages, email templates, forms, infographics, calculators, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, and our core proficiency there is, uh, you know, obviously we work with the brand guidelines and all that, but it's conversion optimized design. Uh, and then the last thing is attribution modeling. So if you're in B2B with an extended sales cycle with multiple decision makers, then attribution modeling, especially multiple decision makers is super important. Um, so we do also uh, help with that. And in the middle of all of that is Sales Lab X. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a pitch towards the end, uh, but where we're a little bit different is we work on a subscription model. So you basically buy a subscription from us and then we help you with all of this. Cool. Uh, Last pitch before I get started. Uh, if you like what you hear here today, we do also have a six weeks Pardot Prodigy Masterclass taught by me, uh, this upcoming class. It is all online and it is starting, I think, in about two weeks. Uh, and then uh, if you do sign up for that, you do get unlimited one-on-one -on -one sessions with me too during those six weeks. Okay. Um, I do like participation. If I haven't... Uh, made that very clear already <laughs> so uh so feel free to ask me you know drop any questions or anything in the chat uh worldwide express are you raising your hand for a question or i see three people with your hands up i'm gonna lower your hands in case it's not ashley did you actually have a question i'm lowering your hand ashley Okay, Ashley. Okay, cool. So we're going to talk about a couple of things uh, up front. The first thing is bringing on, bringing data in, how to do it, what I think a couple of options are, and maybe some pros and cons to that. If you've done this game enough times, there isn't ever an answer, a right or wrong answer. There's just a different answer. So we'll talk about the different scenarios there. We'll talk about personalization with that. Uh, no worries, Ashley. Uh, personalization. We'll talk about reporting and we'll talk about effective uh, experimenting. Okay. And if we have any time uh, left over in the end, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have any questions that you might have. I'm going to go ahead and open up my favorite thing, which is a flowchart. <laughs> so let's talk about um, 
also, while uh, this is recording, I'll go ahead and say this. We do not give legal advice. We do not give GDPR advice. We do not give an opt-in advice. We give technical advice on how to execute on the plans that your legal team uh, tells you that you should do. So none of this should be constituted as such. OK. So um, when you have Zoom info, the primary way that people are going to come in is you're going to go into Zoom info. Uh, and then you're going to upload data directly into Salesforce. Okay, so you're going to find your personas in Salesforce, and then you're going to do a batch upload into Zoom Info. All right, Zoom Info is going to automatically, usually not automatically, but you're going to send that data to Salesforce. Okay. You're going to send your Zoom Info data to Salesforce. I've seen other people. And remember, you, you got to keep in mind, uh, this is not legal advice. This is, you know, uh, Pardot does have opt-in re you know, requirements and stuff like that. But I do see also some people take Zoom info directly into Pardot. OK. And then I also see third people, which I highly don't recommend, <laughs> is CSV data rep just has on their desktop. <laughs> Right, so that's a that's a that's a third option. So now I'll go through some of the pros and cons here. So with uh, Salesforce, if you have a process where when a when a lead is created in Salesforce, it's counting as an MQL, this is going to throw that off. So marketing qualified lead, right? And if you have any questions, or am I, I'm, I'm too. I know everybody's kind of in a different stage, but uh, if you have any questions about what I'm saying, feel free to stop me. But uh, usually what people have is that they have a criteria for what's considered a marketing qualified lead. And there's two ways to do that. Sometimes what people do is they keep everything in Pardot, right? Somebody fills out a webinar form like y'all. Uh, somebody downloads a white paper, they stay in Pardot. They stay in Pardot till they reach a certain score threshold. And then they get pushed into Salesforce when it reaches a threshold. Okay. If that's your standard methodology that that it's not going to go into Salesforce as a lead till, uh, till it reaches a threshold, this is not going to work for you. Zoom info directly into Salesforce because that's going to throw off all your reporting. But this is actually my preferred method. This is my preferred method, Zoom info to Salesforce, and I'll tell you why, right? When you push it, when you push into Salesforce, what I recommend is, if you have an MQ, if, you, if right now you do not have leads in Salesforce till they reach an MQL threshold, what I recommend is you set up some sort of marketing queue, and this is built into Salesforce, right? And you create leads into Salesforce, and then you house them as the owner as the marketing queue till it reaches the MQL status, and then you reassign it to a lead owner. Okay, so let me show you how this goes. So. Zoom info is going to send to Salesforce. Salesforce is going to add to marketing queue. Then MQL criteria will be met. I spelling is my Achilles heel, so don't make fun of me. It is met. We're going to timestamp the MQL date. And we are going to use assignment to lead owner. OK. I'll tell you why I like this right here. Remember, if you have multiple decision makers and you have an extended sales cycle over 30 days, nobody is downloading a white paper or a webinar and then immediately buying. That's just not how the modern sales cycle works, not even for B2C. Right? You're going to download a white paper. You're going to go to a webinar. You're going to go to a conference. You're going to, uh, you're going to see a retargeting ad on LinkedIn, and then you will buy. Now, traditionally, sales will say, oh, yeah, that all came from the conference, but that's not really what happens, right? Remember how, and this isn't an attribution conversation. We'll have another session on that, or if you want to set up a one on one with me, we can dig into it. The way you track all of that is with Salesforce campaigns. The way you track all those different touch points is with Salesforce campaigns. If it's not in Salesforce yet, you can't start adding them to Salesforce campaigns. 
So all those top funnel and mid funnel campaigns that you're doing in digital activities, you're running blind on because you're not getting attribution reporting to it. That's why I like going to Salesforce first and then adding to a marketing queue. This is a nice middle ground where you still get to protect your sales reps bandwidth because the last thing you want is a sales rep all of a sudden getting a bunch of leads assigned to them that you're still maybe nurturing. Um, it's going to throw off your conversion metrics. That's the, now the other option is zoom info to Pardot. Pardot hit threshold. Right. And then go to Salesforce as a lead. This is also okay. Right. The only difference is right here right here all of these parts right here you're going to be using utm parameters now i can get to that into a little bit more daniel is asking to clarify salesforce campaign equals campaign in pardot okay so good question uh, if you do not have connected campaigns turned on already in Pardot, and this is kind of today's conversation is a little bit higher up. So some of this doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, we might need to set up a, a little bit more of a one on one uh, 101 conversation, but I'm going to go into it. If you do not have connected campaigns set up in Pardot, I don't care about Pardot campaigns. <laughs> if you're living in a world Mine. I'm, I actually have gotten coaching not to make absolute statements, but they're absolute statements. Sorry. Uh, but <laughs> I only care about Salesforce campaigns. I only care about Salesforce campaigns. First of all, the main thing I care about is revenue attribution modeling. I want to tie everything that you do back to revenue. If it doesn't tie back to revenue, I don't care about it. JK, I'm kidding. Culture. Uh, but uh, the way you track revenue is with Salesforce campaigns. So I don't care about Pardot campaigns. I care about Salesforce campaigns. So everything, I, everything I'm saying here is Salesforce campaigns. OK. Uh, when you say Zoom info, is that a list from Zoom info or connected Zoom info, Zoom to Salesforce? Zoom connected Zoom info to Salesforce. You go into Zoom info, you find your prospects, you send them to Salesforce as a campaign or as leads. That's what this whole thing is about today and about this, this current thing right here. Right. So zoom info to Salesforce, add to marketing queue, hits the MQL criteria. Make sure you timestamp the MQL date uh, and then use active assignment, active assignment rules to assign it to a user. This is my preferred workflow here. OK. Now, some of y'all might have something that's called instant enrich in zoom info. Do you? Can you all raise your little digital hands if you have that instant enrich or if you if you think you have it? OK. So Zoom Info has two or uh, I feel like I'm doing a Zoom Info pitch here too today. They need to cut me a check, but you can do Zoom Info for a couple of things. One is you can take Zoom Info and you can do these batches and you can upload to your databases and you can use them for whatever legal purposes you want. The second thing is something called instant enrich. So if your sales rep goes to a conference and they type in that email address as a lead in Salesforce, Zoom Info will instantly search their database and see if you have their org details, like what their title is, what their revenue size is, what their, you know, uh, what their revenue is, what their amount of employees, et cetera, and it'll augment all that information. And it happens as soon as a lead is created in Salesforce. Yes, I will send the recording and the, and the flows and the deck. I'm not a big deck guy, so it'll be the flows and the, uh, and the, uh, the presentation, OK? Cool. Yeah, of course. So, um, so with the inst instant enrich, what that does is you go, um, you go to a conference, you find somebody on LinkedIn, or somebody fills out a form on a webinar. And all of the additional data that's in Zoom Info gets immediately augmented. If you have this feature, one, validate that you have it. 
If you have it, I highly recommend you turn it on. It's called Instant Enrich. If you have to pay extra for it, if my Zoom Info reps are on here, sorry, uh, don't do it yet, right? Unless you have a specific strategy for that, for that Instant Enrich, right? What that does is that as soon as a lead comes into Salesforce, it automatically augments that data with the Zoom Info data. It's usually going to use email address as a unique identifier. So if there is an email address in, in Zoom Info that matches an email address that you have in Salesforce, it's automatically going to augment that data in Salesforce. In Salesforce, you can decide if you want Zoom Info to overwrite Salesforce data. For example, if, my if I fill out a form in Pardot and I say my title is strategy specialist, Zoom Info has my title as senior strategy specialist, who, which data do you want to be the point of truth? In Zoom Info, in the mapping, you can decide what you want to be the point of truth, even for instant enrich. There's a third feature of Zoom Info that's called Form Complete. Once again, sorry to the Zoom Info reps that are on here, but uh, if you do not have these features, don't buy uh don't buy it till you have a strategy i have a question here that says what do you mean exactly that salesforce will augment the data does it pull the data from that particular lead beyond the associated email exactly so for example i go into salesforce and i type in or for example y'all registered for this webinar and you put in your first name and your email address hopefully your company email address right you didn't give me any other information when you give me that data there's a lead created in Salesforce, assigned to the marketing queue, right? And it's, it all it has is first name and your email address. Now what's gonna happen is Zoom Info is instantly gonna get triggered. It's gonna search and it's see in their Zoom Info database, does it have that email address? If it has that email address, it's going to find all the other information it has. And usually most data, Aggregators use LinkedIn information and publicly available information. So if your title on LinkedIn is CRO, in Salesforce now, before the title field was empty because you didn't ask for that in the field, now it's going to say CRO in there. Usually it's going to be exact email is going to be the best match. There's exact matches and there's fuzzy matches. Fuzzy matches is even worse, I would say. Fuzzy match is like, oh, first name and last name, it's kind of the same and the state is the same. So we kind of guess. But industry standard is you want email address to do an exact match. I like Zoom Info, but everybody's different. Right? And I, I can tell you more about all the different aggregators after this, uh, after this session today, too, if you want. Cool? So here we go. Right? Uh, the third option that you have for Zoom Info is something called Form Complete. So you know what I just told you? I just told you, if you come to my webinar registration um, and you sign up, right? Uh, it's going to check after the fact if I have your data or not, and then it's going to augment that data. With, with form complete, what it does is it actually checks in real time. Okay, so let me show you. I don't have a live example, but I'll give you a theoretical example. So let's say that your sales rep say, hey, uh, I'm going to pick names now. Rebecca, Rebecca, I don't want any leads unless they have over 100 employees. OK, now, you know, or everybody should know, if you have more than four fields on a form, it's a conversion rate killer every field on, on top of four fields. Right now, you have a decision to make. Sales is saying, I want employee size. Zoom Info might have employee size, it might not for that particular person, okay? So what you can do with Form Complete is, a, you see right now it doesn't say number of employees is in the drop down here. If I type in my email address, you add a piece of JavaScript to your Pardot forms. As soon, it's not gonna do it here because I don't have it set up, but as soon as I go to the next field, it's going to immediately going to search the, the Zoom Info database and it's going to see, does it, even before I click enter, it's going to search and it's going to see, do they have that person in Zoom Info? If they do and they have employee size, it's not going to show the employee size field. If you don't have that 
field in Zoom Info, it's immediately going to add that field dynamically. That's really cool. That way you get the best of both worlds. It's an add-on feature. Like I said, if you're not paying for it already, it's not worth the money. But if you're paying for it already, make sure you use it. That's called form complete. Right? You don't want to have more than four fields on a, uh, on a form. That's a conversion rate. It starts decreasing your conversion rate. Uh, and you want to always make sure the cognitive load doesn't look high when somebody first looks at your form. All right? So you see how we have a lot of white space here, gray lines text inside a box, big H1, drop shadow. It, it doesn't look daunting, right? And when you have eight or nine fields, it starts looking daunting. Yes, email, ad all you need is the email address. The email address is the best thing. If, you, if they give you a company email address, they can derive the rest. Cool. And I'll tell you why, because what they usually do, most of these data aggregators is that they look up the company email formula. So first name dot last name or whatever that is. They find one public uh, email address online and then they scrape the uh, LinkedIn for the first name and last name based on the company profile in LinkedIn. So that's how they get usually that's one of the methods that they get uh, the first name and last name even without that. Cool. So those are the three different scenarios for Zoom Info. And this is my recommended path for Zoom Info. The main reason for that is you get visibility immediately. Uh, and, and Zoom Info, uh, if you don't already, look at your Zoom Info conversion rate from lead con created to MQL. Right? There are, there are assumptions that people make. Like, this is my target account. This is my target title. Oh, we need to talk to CIOs. We need to talk to VPs. We need to talk to sales. We need to talk to marketing. I would say every once in a while, you should test your theories, right? Get a couple of titles that don't match your ICP and then wait 60 days and then see how many of those that came in convert into an MQL. If you don't have them in Salesforce, it's very hard to do that reporting. Non-qualified leads, yeah, uh, yeah. Before their MQL, is that what you call them? You can take yourself off mute if you want. <laughs> but yeah, um, non-qualified lead, yeah. How many of your non-qualified leads convert into marketing qualified leads or qualified leads? So if they're in Salesforce, you get end-to-end -end visibility to that. Any questions, comments? I'm going too fast. <laughs> Okay. The next thing I'm going to talk about is personalization, leveraging all of this information. Okay. So, uh, in Pardot, and I'll show you the, a really good example, right? In Pardot, there's something called dynamic content. Right? Dynamic content. So, basically, what this is, is that based on criteria of the prospect, it can dynamically show information. You can use dynamic content on your website, your live website. You can use dynamic content on Pardot emails, and you can use dynamic content on your landing page. For example, if I know that you have already spent $100,000 with us and closed one opportunities, my H1 on my website can change. Right. So. Let me show you. A... If I'm on my website, it says RevOps as a subscription, right? If you have filled out a part out form, if you've come to a conference and you know my title and you know my title is in marketing, this should say marketing ops as a subscription. You have hundreds of thousands of people coming to your website. I, I creeped on a lot of your websites <laughs> before I came here. I was gonna use some of them in examples, but I was coached not to. Uh, so if you, want some if you want some of my things that I have saved up for your examples, feel free to set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. But a lot of your websites, you sell a lot of things. You sell a lot of things and you sell to a lot of different personas. And there's a lot of noise in the world right now. 
right? The bandwidth from like, you know, coming, you know, TikTok is like every second, right? I'm being bombarded every second. In order to cut through the noise, your message has to be very clear. It has to be to the right person at the right time with the right message. So if this says RevOps, and I know in Zoom Info, do which you're paying for, and you're paying for Pardot, and maybe you're paying for WordPress, this should definitely say marketing ops when it's a marketing title. Let's take it a step further, okay? So we're big fans of Calendly here because it's free. I, I, there's better paid options if you want examples, right? Calendly, uh, we use Mixmax, but it's basically just a calendar tool. I'll tell you the ones not to do, but I won't do it here because we have some of our partners on here. But <laughs> so Calendly is a calendar tool so they can book uh, appointments directly on your sales reps calendars with real time availability. If you have any form on your website, get a demo form, request a quote form, a uh, white paper form. As soon as they fill out that form, you need to capture that momentum and get them to book a time. Now, the problem is <laughs> a lot of times the people who book times, sales reps don't want to talk to them. <laughs> right? Sales reps want to talk to tier one people because they want, I'll make fun of sales reps because they're not, I, I saw my audience. They want things handed to them, right? So if there's an account, if there's a student with a student email address, or there's like a mom and pop shop in Nebraska, I love Nebraska, but you know, this is an example, right? That can't afford your services. You don't want them to get the Calendly page. You want them to say, thank you. Someone's going to be reaching out to you. So how you do that is, this is the data orchestration part. You have to use Zoom Info, you have to use Pardot, and you have to use Salesforce all together. And the, and, and the middle ground for all of that is going to be dynamic content. So you can see here, uh, we have dynamic content set up with Calendly, uh, Calendly uh, calendar embeds, right? So we just came in here and we embedded Calendly onto a thank you page. What does that mean? So what that means is when somebody fills out a form and Zoom Info knows that their day that they have less than 50 employees, they're going to get they're going to get th taken to a thank you page. When Zoom when uh when Zoom Info knows that they have above 50 employees, they're going to show the assigned users Calendly. We're dynamically changing the content on the page based off of the Zoom Info data that we're collecting. Any questions on the execution of that? Because I know I, sometimes I make it sound nice, but you're like, okay, how do I really do it? Or like, I'm confused on a step or anything like that. Or we're trying to do this, how would we do it? No. Cool. So that's dynamic content with Calendly embedded using Zoom Info data. Do y'all, um, does anybody here use tier level for their prospects in Salesforce? Like, uh, or, so, you know, they're scaring, they're scoring and they're grading, right? Scoring is like what they do. Grading is who they are. So maybe you use grading, but I think grading is sometimes overhyped. I like tiers better, but does anybody do grading maybe? Like if their title is this and their annual revenue is this, then do, th then, then they are tier two, tier three. Okay, good. We've got a couple. Feel free to ask questions if you want. Okay. If you have not done that yet, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that. Highly recommend that. Okay. So what you do, Zoom Info has all the data in the world. You're paying for it. You're paying for it. This is the, this is fine. You know, with, uh, with, with the way that uh, the market's adjusting right now, you got to leverage all your tools you have. I got a really funny TikTok I'll send y'all in the recording, but like, uh, of like how everybody's like, give me more MQLs. We're like, how much more budget? And it's like zero more budget. Okay, well then like, what do you want me to do? So like, you know, you're paying for these very, and you know, y'all have, Zoom Info is like top tier, 
Pardot is top tier. Salesforce is top tier. This is like you throw in outreach.io or Apollo, and that's like my dream tech stack, right? I'll tell you the chat stuff, but like you're doing, you're paying for these things, right? Use them, use them, right? Don't over engineer. I, I have the confidence of a sales rep calling a cold lead, <laughs> right? I, I see with marketers sometimes they just so over engineer. If it's not perfect, they don't want to do it. If you're, if you don't know how to set up tiers, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tirade here, right? But let me just, <laughs> just do this right here. Just do, do this for me. You don't have to talk to your Salesforce admin. You don't have to do anything, right? Go into Pardot, create a field, a drop down field. You don't have to sync it to Salesforce if you don't want to, right? Set up a field that's called tier level, three tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three. Set up an automation rule. If their title is this, this, and this, change their tier to tier one. If their company size is this, this, and this, change it to tier two. Don't worry about what you're gonna do with it. <laughs> Don't worry about if the data is accurate. Don't worry about anything, just do it. Come back in 60 days and let's see what the data tells us. Let's see how many go into tier one bucket, how many go into tier two bucket, how many go into tier three bucket. If you're way over indexed on one, that tells you something too. It costs you nothing and it'll take you about 10 minutes to do using the data you already have and the tools you already have. Tier levels, you're welcome for the nudge. <laughs> cool, so scoring and grading is sometimes very daunting and I think it's way over engineered for most orgs. I'm usually thinking, what is this fastest path to revenue? <laughs> to me, the fastest path to revenue is tiers. Everything else is noise. I want to tell the signal, tiers are where it's at. If you have more than, tier, more than three tiers, you're selling Android, we want to sell iPhones. We got the Pro, we got the Basic, we got the old last year's model. You can add them to a list, Amy, or you can create a drop-down field that's just in part out that's called tier level and change that field. Or if you want, just add them to lists. Why not? Here, Amy, I'll tell you one, la one more thing, right? Everybody, add them to a list, add them to a list. The next time you send an email, just that you, send, you usually send to everybody, just send it to the individual list and look at open rate by list. Just do that for me, just do that for me, just do that for me. <laughs> All right, just do that for me, right? All you're gonna do is just make the th list like Amy's saying, next time you send an email, instead of sending it to one big list, just send it to the three lists, and then just see open rate by list. What do you got to lose, right? So that's personalization. And I talked a little bit about segmentation too, right? Personalization is, I definitely want you to think of one way that you can use Zoom info data in your, in your, in your journey. Okay. A lot of times what people do, and I'm going to go into reporting and personalization. I was just building a uh, nurture based on persona for an org that I manage, right? So this is what we do. We build these, right? And they came to me and they came up with 10 different personas for 10 different engagement studios and 10 different emails for each engagement studio, okay? <laughs> and they're like, okay, Milton, uh, you're on a, we're on an unlimited subscription with you and you're going to do all of this for, for us for free because, you know, we have an SLX subscription. I was like, yep. We totally can for you, unlimited, right? Now, do you need to do this? Right? Can you do this? And should you do this are two separate things, right? So what I always recommend is build your set, when you're building out engagement studios, any sort of personalization, don't get trigger happy. And here's the thing I want you to keep in mind, right? A lot of our vendors and our partners are on here right now. Salesforce reps, <laughs> um, Pardot rep, <laughs> Zoom info reps, right? Remember, everything you see online is contrived to make you buy more tools, okay? So when they show you really sexy stuff to do, they're always gonna show you like, buy this thing and you can do this. Don't do that, use what you have. Before you build any engagement studios, right? What I want you to do is I want you to do that segmentation, right? Then I want you to build one generic, engagement studio one generic with five emails okay then 
I want you to put those segments into five different campaigns, right? So instead of building five different drips, five different engagement uh, uh, studios with five different personas and 50 different emails, I want you to build one that's generic, a generic engagement studio that meets all five. Okay. Then I want you to build five campaigns. Remember, this is recorded. I'll send it to you later today. I want you to build five campaigns. I want you to send everybody through the one generic engagement studio drip. I want you to wait till they all go through the engagement studio drip. I want you to look at the results. I want you to see the persona with the lowest engagement studio, uh, enga lowest conversion rate with the highest amount of leads inside. Then I want you to build an engagement studio for that persona first. You see what I'm saying? What I'm saying is instead of trying to boil the ocean and just say, I'm going to do one for all, right? And it's going to be this analysis paralysis where you never get started on anything. Build one. Look at what the data is telling you and then triage what you should do second and third. I've seen people spend months and months building an engagement studio that's hyper personalized for an audience of 100 people. But you ain't getting ROI on that. And nobody gives you credit for like busy work, <laughs> right? I'll give you credit if you ever want credit, come to me, right? But like, you gotta look at the high volume, low conversion rate and start with those personas. Then, and you already have that data, right? So build those reporting, get that data from ZoomInfo and then personalize. Cool, I'm gonna pause there. Any questions, comments or concerns on anything I said? or any questions in general about Zoom Info Part R to Salesforce, please ask something. No, no, too much, too little, just enough. Okay, more about customer personas, what do you mean? Tell me, tell me what, tell me what you mean by per customer personas, how to define them. Okay. So, um, this, that's a bigger conversation, I think. Uh, but what I would say is go into zoom info. Yeah, go ahead, Rita. Uh, I'll answer this question. Go into zoom info. Actually do this for me. Do this for, uh, Rita, you can ask your question, right? Go into Salesforce. Build a report of all your closed one opportunities for last year. Okay. Then build a report of all your closed lost opportunities for last year. Okay. Both. There's a thing called survivor bias. If you keep just looking at your closed one, you'll just keep, you'll lose out the people that are dying in the accident, right? So, so build a report of all your closed lost opportunities and build a report of all your closed one opportunities. Two reports. It'll have the contact that's associated with those opportunities. Then group them by title and revenue. That's the first stage of you building your persona. What are the titles? What is the revenue? And what is the company size that usually sell, closes with us? And what are the sizes that usually we lose with? There's two big levers that you're working for when you're meeting revenue, right? One is a higher conversion rate. And it's two, it's a higher velocity. Okay. So once you do those two things, which is a closed loss report and a closed one report, I want you to do one more thing. And if you don't know how to build any of these reports, set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. I want you to do one more thing. I want you to look at opportunity age of the closed one opportunities. Okay. I want you to look at the deals that close really quickly. And I want you to see if there's any similarities between them. I want you to see the deals that take a really long time and I want you to see if there's any similarities with them. If you want to take it one step further, break them down by rep and see if there's a human aspect to it too. There usually is. If there is a persona that usually takes double the amount of time to close win, that means that your value prop and all your messaging is not tailored to that persona. You're not able to take your product or your service from a nice to have to a must have with that persona. All it takes is one good landing page, AB testing the H1 to solve that problem for you. 
But you have to know the problem before you can solve it. Okay, go ahead, Rita. So, um, you know, in Zoom Info, they have a set of industries, uh, but we have specific industries and naming conventions that we need to follow because we partner with one of our partners and that's the naming convention we need to use for industries. Is there a way to automatically uh, get the information from Zoom Info, but to get it the right way with the way we name the industries in our database? 100%. Without having, yeah? Without without having to do what? Say the second part? Without part. having to do it, you know, with Excel uploads and downloads and... Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're doing an Excel upload or a download, that's usually a yellow flag for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what you should do, right? Uh, we do this, the data normalization. So what Rita is saying is, here, here um, data integrity or data normalization. None of this is possible unless everybody's speaking the same language. So if you, in Pardot, you have a form, a drop-down form, and it says sales VP, and in Zoom Info, it says senior sales vice president, and you're trying to build a list of everybody, all vice presidents, how do you do that? Because you're not speaking the same language. The data isn't normalized between your systems. Now, usually I would say, pick one language and use them across the board, right? Now that's easier said to done. But what we can do, Rita, what we usually do for that data normalization act exercise is we have two fields in Salesforce. Sometimes what Zoom Info and my Zoom Info partners on the call, what they would recommend you do is just take your main field and use Zoom Info data because then it's sticky, right? And you can, you're can you building your whole system around Zoom Info data. What I recommend you do, and for you, Rita, that's not even a possibility, you have two fields. You have your Zoom Info field, which you might have as a hidden field in Salesforce, right? And then you mm -hmm. have your, you know, your actual field that's your partner facing field right then you set up flows in you set up a flow one flow do you have a full-time salesforce admin rita who can help you with this yes okay so it can either be an apex script or it can be a flow and basically what happens is every time that zoom info pulls in data it maps it to the data that you think it should be on your side and it does that automatically in real time okay perfect cool good question thank you uh, yep of course um any other questions? Anybody else? If you have any, if you have any plain text fields in your database that a customer can enter, highly, highly recommend you do an audit and then you try to see if you can get rid of that. Okay. Plain text fields are, unless you have a very particular use case like title, state any of these things that which plain text field their segmentation like killer i have another question yeah, go so ahead, so we do a lot of our campaigns per industry okay, okay. it's back to the industry Beautiful. field love it i love it yep uh and the challenge that we're having is sometimes the lead industry is different from the account industry and is different from the contact industry <laughs> We're ending up with three different values constantly, and we have to clean it up constantly. Is there a way to set it up so all industries are the same, whether it's leads, contact, or account? 100%. Two things. It's going to be in the weed to write this down for your Salesforce admin. One, you need to make sure that you use a global field set. It sounds like right now you have multiple field sets. You need to have a global field set. Okay. Okay. Second but thing isn't is make, it limited. Yep, isn't it limited to a certain number? You can't get more than a certain number of global field sets. Maybe, but uh, there probably is a workaround to that because I know that's usually what I recommend. Now, there's two things, right? Like there's a global field set and also just normalizing it across all the things. I highly recommend a global field set. Look into is have you run into that issue? Of, it, uh, yes. of there being a limit? Is it the limit of selections on there or is it the limit of how many global field sets? It's how many global field sets. Okay, well, I would prioritize this one then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, me, uh, I can probably think of a workaround uh, or I could talk to one of the Salesforce admins here, but like, I would definitely look into a global field set, maybe do an audit of where else you're using it. If not, at least try to normalize amongst all the individual field sets. 
and see where the input methods are that, but you're absolutely right. There does need to be a data normalization process of like, uh, before you do anything else. We can set Perfect. up another session too, Rita, if you want to talk about it more. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? We got nope. another 10 minutes. Nope. I have a quick one. Now too. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about par dot lining uh, because I saw you were having you were using the like the par dot uh, website. That's what I uh, enjoy the most. But uh, comparing to the par dot lining, are you considering switching over, or um, how do you think of the new? I guess like Salesforce is uh, trying to integrate more par dot and make it their new thing. Um, what's your take on that? I think it's good overall. I think before uh, there's a new license set that they came out with a month ago, where everybody can get part out lightning, you get a 1000 part out lightning users for free. Right? Uh, before that, you had to have to like use the email builder and everything like that, you had to have uh, you had to have pay for a Salesforce license. So if you also if you don't know that it's the, the permission set is called account engagement permission set with the new rebrand. So before that, I classic uh, I think it's okay. I think it's inevitable. It's going to converge because that's they're going to be their value prop when they're competing against Marketo and HubSpot. They know that, you know. Uh, and I'm glad, you know, after 15 years, it's happening. Uh, shots at the Salesforce team that's on board. So I think overall, it's good. I think it's fine. Uh, I don't think there's anything huge with it. I'm just been doing this for a long time, and I'm just old, so I just keep using this. And I like being able to open links and new tabs. You know, this is tiny, small stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. For some um, of the tabs. It's basically just the iframe inside of Salesforce, right? That is actually the old Pardot classic app. The new Pardot Lightning app is actually embedded. It's pretty much exactly the same, but kind of, but not really. It's a little bit structurally different, but it looks exactly the same. But if our Salesforce instance is slower compared to like Pardot, obviously, on this page, then each tab I knew I opened up, it would take a longer time to process. And yeah, I use classic for yeah. those kind of users. Rebecca does the same thing. Do you see yeah. other people or like RevOps people switching over to the part for that lightning more? Or all new people are using lightning, which is great about enterprise adoption curves, right? <laughs> they just train you on something up front and then people just use that right yeah. um uh, what um where older people like me uh if you've used pardot classic for a while you keep using pardot classic and they're not going to discontinue it so there's not a right or wrong way you have my blessing to keep using classic <laughs> no. thanks yeah a amy um here's the implementation guide for connected campaigns it looks a lot harder than it is if you have any questions feel free to set that up uh you know reach out to me and i send you an email later today okay but connected campaigns is huge if you haven't set that up yet. Uh, we, I could have a whole session about that. Connected campaigns, connected campaigns, connected campaigns. Connected campaigns make your Pardot data set and your Salesforce data set one. So I can do, uh, I can do reporting, Pardot reporting, like efficacy of subject lines in Salesforce because Pardot reporting was never accurate. Uh, I think I might have a dashboard here that I can show you. Part of engagement. I love Salesforce reporting, even though it's not the prettiest thing in the world. But you see how we have uh, 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 social media clicks. We have marketing whenever that loads. Subject line performance. We have uh, form performance. This is A/B testing that we're doing, and it's all in Salesforce, right? Uh, imagine I have I have another one where we have engagement for the campaigns and revenue attribution, right, side by side. That's connected campaigns. So if you don't have that turned on, make sure you have that turned on. Cool. I am quickly going to tell you a little bit about us. It's going to be recorded. So if you if you don't want to do that, listen to my pitch. Don't. <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, basically, what we do is what we just showed you today. Uh, we have a subscription service where we'll come in and we will help you document all your workflows, all your different tools, what your conversion rate is on each step. Then what we'll do is that uh, we'll give you ideas on how to improve that. Then we'll also break down 
these ideas that you have, like Rita, it sounds like there's a data normalization exercise that needs to happen. It ha sounds like there needs to be maybe forms that need to be updated. It sounds like maybe there's a little bit of training that needs to happen, right? There's a lot of moving pieces there in order to get what I talked about today, some of the ideas to actually happen. What we do is we first map out what we think the end goal is for you, like Rita, and then we'll see all the pieces that need to happen in order for that to happen, right? So we might say, in order for that to happen, we need to uh, create new forms with drop-down fields. We need to create that Apex script and that form. Uh, we need to create a, uh, you know, a specific landing page with you know, dynamic content. We need to uh, do a batch upload to get rid of 100 years worth of data. You know, everything that's needed in order for that to actually launch. We need to make sure that Zoom Info is feeding into Pardot properly and feeding into Salesforce. Right, like all the steps in order to get that end, some of the ideas that we talked about today and some of the ideas I'm sure you have in your head to get done. We'll help you document all of that in a tool called Asana. Then what happens is we have internal resources. We have Salesforce admins, we have Pardot admins, we have designers, we have coders, we have people like me, strategy specialists. Uh, we, these individual tasks get assigned to us in the back end. That's what we call a dynamic resource allocation. So if it's a Zoom Info task, it gets assigned to one of our Zoom Info people. If it's a Pardot thing, it gets assigned to one of our Pardot people. If it's a Salesforce thing, it gets assigned to one of our Salesforce people. If it's a data normalization thing, it gets assigned to our data team. You never have to see all of that or know any of that. Um, we're going to manage all of that for you. And then we build these out for you. If there's any sort of design assets like landing pages, infographics, um, forms, calculators, any of that stuff. Uh, we're going to work with your design team uh, and your, if you don't have a design team, we'll do it for you. And then we're going to use our best practices and we're going to, we're going to give you proofs of all the design assets in 48 hours or less, email templates, landing pages, infographics, forms, all that fun stuff. If you have any edits, you just come in here and you can say, I want this background image to be a female if they are a female, right? That actually works really well. Uh, and if you wanna know how you do that, I love these guys right here, Gender API. It's pretty cost-effective. You basically upload your email list and it's pretty accurate. Uh, and it tells you, um, it'll, it'll give you a drop-down field of male or female. In the, uh, we have a, uh, a lot of our B2B orgs with female executives. Uh, the female imagery worked really, really well. Um, so, you know, you can use gender API and then just say, I want this background image to, and this is included in our SLX subscription. You'll just say, I want this background image to be a female if they're a female. Now, usually you have to make sure that the data is normalized in Salesforce and Pardot. You got to make sure it looks good on Windows 2013 on a mobile device, uh, dark mode, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then you got to, you know, do all of it with us. You just come in here and make this comment. We code it for you. We test it on 50 different browsers to make sure it looks good. Then we have secure access to your Pardot Salesforce instance. We click start or send for you. Then on the Salesforce side, we build you attribution reporting. So we'll say, hey, Madison, uh, these are the 10 accounts that you had no, uh, no uh, penetration in. This one email campaign, this one landing page now got you, you know, activity on these accounts that you didn't have in. Uh, your average sales cycle is 573 days. Uh, your, when you segmented by XYZ, it became 437 days. We do, do a pipeline analysis. If I see this in your pipeline, I'm yelling at you. Because <laughs> uh, if you have a 50% close one rate, that means that sales is not converting ops. It's too high. Uh, it means sales is not converting ops early enough and marketing is not getting attribution to that. So then I would do training with your sales team to make sure that they have best practices on how to do that, right? So we're handling the end-to-end -end attribution on there and we're man handling the end-to-end -end strategy and execution. That's what we do. We do it for one flat fee every month. Um, the plan that I just went over uh, right now is called our professional plan. Uh, it does come with what we call guaranteed ROI. That's how confident we are in it. So uh, if you qualify for that, we guarantee you that we will give you attributed revenue for the amount of money that you spend with us. Right. Uh, or our work is free. So uh, that's that's what we do. Uh, that's how we do it. And then I got, uh, and you get to do that every month on an unlimited basis. Never have to worry about any hours. Never have to worry about scope. Never have to worry about any of that stuff. You have a dedicated team. Uh, 
Uh, and I am personally on professional accounts too. So if you like working with me, uh, I have a couple of accounts open. Uh, so I will work with you on a regular basis and I will not only come up with ideas with you, but I will also execute for you. So you don't have to worry about who's going to be doing the work that we came up with today. Cool. Uh, everything's on unlimited basis, no hours, no scope, no project, uh, no limits. How much is the package Rita? Let's show you. Since somebody's asking buying questions, <laughs> uh, it's right here. The plan that uh, that covers all of the stuff that I talked about today is professional, uh, because you do get a dedicated team with you, uh, so it's not random people every time. Uh, it is a twelve month term, built month to month, uh, or quarterly or annually. It's the same price no matter what. Uh, this is Pardot and Salesforce, which I highly recommend, uh, and the only accounts that I manage. But everybody's as smart as me. And if you like somebody who's less sarcastic, uh, you don't need to get the professional. Uh, essentials is just part of, and basic is we just do what we just did right now. You get one-on-one -on -one access to someone like me, uh, but we don't execute for you. Professional is where you get the ROI guarantee, so we can because obviously we have to build the uh, revenue attribution modeling for you. Also gives us an economic incentive to make sure it's done. <laughs> Uh, and actually done and actually being used. Cool. Awesome. Uh, you will get an email from me, quote unquote, uh, later today. Uh, the email is not from me. The email is automated. But if you reply to the emails, the emails go to me. Uh, if you like the webinar and you learn one or two things, love a LinkedIn mention. Uh, we will be doing more webinars. Uh, there is no pressure to buy anything. Uh, so. You know, if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one session and just talk about stuff, feel free to do that too. Go ahead, Rita. Did you have a question? No. No, I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, I try to do as much as I can in an hour. So hopefully, I wet the beak a little bit. Cool. Set up the segments. All right, y'all. I'll send you the recording later today. Thanks. Thank you. Thank y'all. Have a nice day.